Hello again, this is Josh from Weekend Handyman. Um, the last video that I personally posted was of my super light rocket car, which is right here. If you'd like to see a little bit more of a breakdown of what this is, click right on the, uh, the body right here, and you'll be brought to a video that explains this super light rocket car a little bit more. <clears throat> Anyways, in that video, I don't believe I mentioned it, but I also have um, die-cast rocket cars that I've made and am building currently. Right now, this is the current one that I've been building on. Um, it is a VW Bug. Um, it's kind of highly modified, actually. Now, let me preface this by saying, if you're going to make a die-cast model rocket car, it is very simple. You don't really ever have to get as detailed as I got or as complicated as I got with this one, even though this isn't really that complicated in in reality. But if you want to make a die-cast rocket car, it's possible to just go buy a die-cast rocket car, drill a hole in the back of the body, and either get a rocket tube or find something that fits the size rocket you want to use, and just hot glue it in there and you'll have a rocket car, essentially, if you want to go that route. I, however, have got a little bit more um, complex with it. Um, this is a my, my also VW Bug, I believe it was started off as. Uh, yes, it was my Osto. <clears throat> it originally did have a plastic chassis, which of course broke after run run, because I didn't really put much time into this design. I just sort of put it together, and it broke right away. <clears throat> I did, however, like the VW Bug, so I sort of decided to resurrect it, if you will. Um, right now, it's still not completely finished. Um, the body's still not attached. But what I did is made a brass chassis for it. Because the plastic one broke and I wanted to keep, you know, this design, I went ahead and just took a piece of brass, cut it out in a similar shape as the original chassis, and then I added these frame rails to stiffen up the brass because it was sort of weak and would have bend, uh, bent really easily. Um, then what I did is I obviously added the axles and wheels. Now these are the same wheels, axles, and all that stuff that I used on the plastic chassis. Just a little improved. Um, <clears throat> the front wheels are the same wheels that originally came on the VW Bug itself. Um, I shaved off the tread a little bit though. So they're uh, slick. I don't know if you can see that, but I shaved all the tread off. Um, these were originally all silver. I painted the outside black and kept the hubcap silver. These rear wheels, however, are actually um, slick rubber wheels that are, would be used on a Mini T. They actually fit the, the bill pretty well. There are similar proportions to the body and whatnot. But these are just rubber slick wheels that came on a Mini T. <clears throat> They're not really very grippy though. But they'll get the job done. It's just a die cast rocket car. It's really more for fun. But these, they were painted black. They were really just white. Anyways, <clears throat> If you're wondering, the way I have the axles set up they'll be held on is there is a piece of brass bent up around the bottom of the chassis, which sort of rests, or the axle rests in and rides in, and then there's just a bent piece of brass that goes over the top of the axle with not just cut out to hold it down in place. That And this is all soldered in, and these frame rails are all soldered in, because being brass it's very easy to solder. It's you know, like soldering copper, brass is very easy to solder. <clears throat> and it rolls really well. Um, you can lube each one of these joints. The lube actually holds really well in there, and it rolls super easy. And it does go really straight. Somehow I am always get lucky and get, the, get it right the first time in that sense. Um, <clears throat> the rocket tube... I believe this is a solder tube, an old solder tube, an old Dean solder tube. If you're familiar with any uh, radio controlled uh, stuff, you know, you know where Dean's comes from, but that's an old Dean soldering tube. The size model rocket that I use is a uh, C67, uh, I believe. Uh, the reason I use a C is because it has a longer duration. It doesn't actually have as, uh, it actually has less power than an A10. The 10 is like the level of power, I think it's 10 newton meters. Well, 6, it has only 6 newton meters, but it has a longer burn, because it's a bigger engine. Not more power, but it has a longer burn. Um, but this rocket is just held on with another piece of brass that's soldered in there. Um, solder holds really well. It shouldn't fall apart at all. 
Um, like I said, though, you do not have to ever make a chassis like this. You can pretty much just drill a hole in the back of your diecast body, stuff a rocket engine in there somehow, and you're good to go. I, of course, took a step further. And even beyond that, I've taken another step further by creating a, di a driver for my uh, 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 rocket car here. This was an Obi -Con <coughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi um, Star Wars doll. I already had the seat from, I've had the seat for a very, very long time. I don't even know where I got it. I don't know if I made it or if I just sort of took it from somebody else who made it. I don't know. But that was an Obi-Wan Kenobi. I've added a stole, uh, a skull head to him to make him look cooler. But he'll sit nicely in there, just like this. <clears throat> I have decided to go doorless just so I can hang his arm out here and sort of have his. What I want to do is just sort of, you know, make his hand sort of be held on like that. I think it looks cool. Of course, I mean, it's. it's There's no point in doing that. I just. It's a little addition that I, I think looks cool. But other than that, this one is all done. I just got to attach the body and attach the driver in there. Um, some of the other past rocket car designs I've had, successful and not successful. Um, <clears throat> this is a this is an older one. This there was a uh, <clears throat> Dodge Challenger. This is probably the best diecast rocket car to date that I've ever made. Only well, lasted a good couple years, and then it, of course it. I believe it did start to bend. It started like the started to fold up this way. <clears throat> I believe is what happened. And then sort of as a last hurrah. Me and a couple buddies got together and we strapped a bunch of D-sized rockets to it and it caught on fire and this is what ended up, this is what was left basically. But to date, this is probably the best rocket car, die-cast rocket car that I have ever made. Uh, another one that I've had was this semi-truck. This is a pretty good design too. Um, I originally started off using the uh, plastic chassis which broke, so I moved on to this steel rod chassis which wasn't, which in reality wasn't much better. Because I wasn't able to get the solder to stick real well. I mean, it stuck okay, but of course it still broke. This is a, this worked, but I mean, it, it ended up breaking, so it wasn't really that great. Um, it never would, it never had lived up to this one. But yeah, these are diecast rocket cars, as opposed to the super light one, which you've already seen. Like I said, if you wanted to get into diecast rocket cars, you don't have to get very complicated at all. Just drill a hole. Stuff a rocket engine there, and you're good to go. But <clears throat> I think this looks pretty good, and it rolls nice, goes nice and straight. Um, another thing I forgot actually is a little extra design cue. I've sort of closed off the headlight uh, bezels with just pieces of metal. I don't know, just sort of give it that other extra race car look. Um, the hood is held down with a zippy tie. This is sort of something I've done a couple times. It was I did the same thing on this uh, Challenger. Was held on with a zippy tie. That <clears throat> all I did is just took a small zippy tie, drilled a hole into the diecast hood through the underside here. Um, you burn it, melt it, well somehow melt it either with fire or with the uh, soldering iron to make it you know flat and stick down there. And then on the top, do the same thing, and the hood does not fly open. But this is that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below asking your questions. If you have any, I don't know, rocket car stories, post those too. If you want, subscribe, give us a like. Have a nice day.